Hi, my name is David and I'm going to talk to you about something called the twofold cost of sex, or also called the twofold cost of males. So evolutionary biologists are very interested in why sex exists. It's not the only way that reproduction can happen. Um, there are species which reproduce asexually. Just a virgin female will give birth to females, which will give virgin birth to females, which will give virgin birth to females, which will etc. And there is no need for males whatsoever in some species. So how come the rest of us do need sex and do need males? And there are many ideas proposed for what the benefit of sex is. I'm not going to talk about what they are. I'm going to talk about why the question feels so serious to evolutionary biologists, and that is that there is a huge cost to sex, at least according to the argument I will tell you about. Um, and so the challenge in finding out what the purpose of sex is, is finding out what benefits are so good that they are good enough to overcome this twofold cost and still be worth it. So the so the problem is that if you start with a population which is sexually reproducing, but a mutant arose, which was a asexual female who would only give birth to asexual daughters, who would only give birth to asexual daughters, etc., it would seem like that family, that gene, that mutation that caused this to happen, would take over really fast. And the reason is this. I'm going to put a, a diagram up here so you can see. Uh, for, most, for many species, it's not actually true of humans, the female contributes all of the resources to the offspring. The male only contributes the genes. And so pretty much the... A female can make, an asexual female can make a certain number of eggs, and whether or not a male in, is involved will not help her make any more eggs, because she's already the one doing all the work. So the asexual female can make two daughters. Each of them can also make two daughters. Each of them can also make two daughters. And so if you see here, it's um, doubling every generation. But now look at the sexual population. It's still only two children that the female can make. Remember, the male is not contributing anything. All he's contributing is his genes, and that doesn't help you make more daughters. You would need more resources and more cytoplasm. And for example, uh, think of the egg and the sperm. The egg is a lot bigger than the sperm. The egg contains everything the offspring need. The sperm does not contain anything except for the genes. So in the sexual population, uh, if you start with a male and a female, the female makes two children. The male doesn't make any children. It only sneaks its genes in there. Of those two children, one is female, but the other is male. So again, the daughter can make two children, but the male doesn't do anything. All it does is sneak its genes in there. Again, look down. There's one daughter. That daughter can make two children. But so, so if you see the difference, in the asexual population, Every child is a female, and because every child is a female, it can make that many more children of its own. But in the sexual population, some of the children are males, and they cannot contribute to population growth. All they can do is sneak their genes in. So, the idea, or the, the connection of this is that if you had a population which was sexually reproducing, but a mutation appeared in a female, which made the female asexual and give birth to asexual daughters. Each of them would have asexual daughters, and this gene would be spreading a lot faster than the other one. So for this example, from the diagram I showed you, uh, that gene would double every generation, whereas, or that, that lineage would double every generation, whereas the sexual population would only be maintaining its size, and so it would seem like it should take over within a few generations and sexual females and males should be completely driven out of the population and not exist anymore. Um, yeah, and, and with slightly different numbers, this would also work. You could have, I, I had it with the female making two children, but if instead you had females can make four children, then the sexual population would double every generation but the asexual population would quadruple every generation instead, so it's still the same problem. 
Um, uh, yeah, so that's the twofold cost of males. Um, it was proposed by John Maynard Smith. Um, I corrected myself at the beginning from calling it the twofold cost of sex because there is also another thing proposed by George Williams which has been called the twofold cost of sex but should more properly be called the twofold cost of meiosis. Um, and so just these things have been conflated in the past, both being called the twofold cost of sex, and so I avoided that. Um, I'm not going to tell you about the twofold cost of meiosis, but that's the phrase you should Google if you're interested. I'll put a thing down there so you can check it out. Um, yeah, so... Oh, and the, the other thing was um, the twofold cost of males uh, does not apply if the male does actually contribute anything more than just the genes, which, for example, is true for humans and monkeys and, I don't know, something. Um, and the reason is because if the male does contribute something, then that allows the female to actually make more offspring than she could have asexually. And if that's the case, then the math will be different. And if the math is different enough, the cost might not be there. Um, so, yep, yeah, the twofold cost of males is the starting place for most discussions of the benefit of sex and how good and how to account for this benefit to be good enough to overcome the cost. Um, thanks for listening.